Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Health Station live event. I'm Coach Ramirez, and today I'm bringing you Take Your Shot, Building a Mini Desktop Basketball Game. Before we get started, I want to thank the Chula Vista Elementary School District for giving us and supporting us uh, the opportunity to be able to do this with you guys. Love it. I would also like to thank the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, which is where the health station is located. Also like to thank Mr. Bruder and Ms. Beistract in the background uh, producing this with me. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's get started. So today we are going to learn about basketball around the world and a few of the players. Basketball in the Olympics, specifically Kevin Durant and Diana Taurasi. I'm gonna take you to Coach's Physical Fitness Corner and tell you a little bit about something you can do to improve your basketball game physically. I'm gonna, we're gonna then career spotlight the athletic trainer. Somebody very, very important to all athletes, but specifically basketball quite a bit because of how much they move on the court. Then we're gonna get on to building the mini desktop basketball game and finish it off with a Kahoot. All right, if you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. So basketball is a worldly game. Represented and, and 213 countries are members of the FIBA, which is an international basketball association. Last year, the NBA had 107 international players from 41 different countries. And over the years, the WNBA has had players from 53 different countries. Definitely a worldly game. And so that brings us as to why basketball is in the Olympics. The Olympics brings the world together and compete and competes in, in, in sports. And so basketball has been a part of this since 1936, which is when it debuted. And just a little bit, a, a little bit of background on that as well is that basketball, when it debuted in the Olympics in 1936, the inventor of basketball, James Naismith, handed the gold medals in that debut Olympic, Olympic time for basketball. It was a very special honor that that was probably for him as far as being able to do that. Awesome story. So as we think about basketball in the Olympics currently and, uh, and, and this last couple decades, I wanted to highlight, uh, uh, highlight Kevin Durant because in his Olympic appearances, he's been to three of them. In all three, he's won gold medals. He's the all-time leading scorer in the Olympics. And in 2020 Olympics, which was the 2021 Olympics that just happened, he actually got the honor of MVP. As well, in his own career in the NBA, he's won three championships and one NBA, NBA M MVP. Say that quickly five times. On the other hand, for the women's basketball in the Olympics, I wanted to highlight Diana Taurasi. Five Olympic appearances in the last couple decades. Five gold medals for her. Three-time NCAA national champion in her own right. Three times WNBA champion and a and a one-time WNBA MVP. So these two together representing the United States has been very, very well done. And so now that I've got you thinking about basketball and for those of you who play basketball or wanna play basketball, I wanna take you to Coach's Physical Fitness Corner, something I'm gonna start today. I wanna to tell you about speed and agility really, really important for all sports, but since we're talking about basketball, it's important there. Agility training drills allow an athlete to develop muscles and reaction time that will not only help them become faster, but also more responsive, laterally, and laterally mobile. And so moving quickly, boys and girls, is really, really important. You want to do, you want to move laterally, linear, change of direction, deceleration, acceleration, these are the components of improving speed and agility in basketball. 
So I have a ladder drill for you, which is a big part of trying to develop um, uh, being quick and, and agile on the basketball court. Let me show you a couple of those uh, exercises. So here we have a ladder. I think we've uh, we've all seen one of these. OK, and so I'm going to go through three different uh, uh, drills in progression so you know how you can work up to something like this and get a little faster. So first of all, working with two feet. You want to be able to jump with two feet in and out. Work your way up to go as quickly as possible. Once you get used to it, faster and faster and faster are going to improve those muscles. The next one, you want to split up your feet now. You want to go in, out for each one. So now you've got two feet moving, okay? As you can see there, it's reminding you a little bit more about moving on the basketball court. Finally, is, the, is, uh, is replacing your feet inside the ladder. So I look something like this. So you want to start here. So moving your feet quickly, getting your heart rate going is going to definitely get you a little more successful on that basketball court because that's what basketball is, a part, is about. Sprinting, moving to the sides, okay? Try those and see what happens. All right. Moving on to our first question of the day. Talking about speed and agility, what sports or physical activities requires quick body movements? So I told you about basketball. So which other sports do you think or do you have you experienced where you have to move quickly? Go ahead and put those in the chat, okay? In the question and answer. And I'll bring in Mr. Bruder later in to give me some of the uh, sports and activities that you guys brought up. All right, moving on. So, like I mentioned, basketball needs a lot of quick movements. And with those quick movements, boys and girls, come injuries. For example, just recently, Kevin Durant, in the last few years, suffered a really big injury, actually in 2018. Took him out of the playoff games. Really, really important part of the, uh, of the season. On that injury, he had to sit out a whole year and then get back into the game. So he worked really closely with the athletic trainers. And as you can see, the athletic trainers uh, on the screen and in the pictures work with the athletes to try to make sure that they prevent injuries and try to get them back on the field as quickly as possible. So here at the training center, boys and girls, okay, we have a building, a place called sports medicine. And that is where athletic trainers spend a lot of their time on besides time in besides being on the field with the athletes. And so I want to take you on a short little tour of the sports medicine building uh, area where athletes go to get that help from the athletic trainers. Let's check it out. Coach Ramirez, we're not hearing the audio on it. Okay, let me go ahead and pause this real quick. Take it to the beginning. I'm sorry about this, boys and girls. Let me get back on here. All right, let's try this again. Hello everyone, Coach Ramirez here showing you Sports Med at the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center. As we come in, as you can see, athletes get reported in. And here are the different equipments used in order to get the athletes back and running. <laughs> as you can see, the area is has open spaces for the athletes to train. 
and work out their injuries, get healthy once again. So athletic trainers in here make sure athletes get back on the field as soon as possible. All right. So as you saw the area where athletic trainers work with the athletes, a little bit about what they do is they evaluate and advise individuals on how to avoid or recover from athletic related injuries or illnesses. They also advise them on how to maintain their peak physical fitness. I may also provide, they may also provide first aid or emergency care for them when they're on the field and, and it's necessary. So if that sounds interesting to you guys and you happen to know what your leg style level is, boys and girls, the athletic trainer coming into the career should have an at leg style level of 1450. So where do you see yourself at compared to that Lexile level? And um, it, that could be a goal that uh, you could try to reach. All right. At this point, I want to give you a little taste of what the athletic trainer does uh, in action. Okay. Was the audio on that last time, Mr. Bruder? Yes, it was. All right, let's go ahead and get this video going so you have a better idea of what they do. Behind the scenes with Mendel's. Mindy Hoffman. I'm the head football athletic trainer here at Kansas State. We're responsible for the health and safety um, of our student athletes and taking care of the, them. Evaluation process, rehab process, all the prevention type stuff that we do with taping and so forth like that. Uh, oh. box, so five, oh, five boxes okay. of the pre-wrap a day. Three boxes of the victory tape. Yeah, victory tape, which is the stuff that goes on top. 200 rolls of tape per day, basically, between the pre-wrap and the actual tape. ankle taped up, you're going to use your heel and lace pad, then you're going to cover it in power flex, then you got your victory tape, which is even stronger, and you're good to go. My name's Connor Bennett, I'm assistant athletic trainer here with K-State Football. We're on our way out to practice to uh, spat some alignment, help them with some ankle stability, that kind of stuff, prevent injuries. Nobody puts more hours in than the uh, athletic training staff. They're here early in the morning, late at night, making sure that we're all taped up, all braced up. If you're injured, they'll be in the training room helping you out. Can't thank those guys enough. Hey, Menders. Yeah, buddy. Hey, Art Menders. What does taping the wrists help with? Uh, whenever I punch, you know, it just helps it from not go flying backwards. It helps prevent wrist injuries, hyperextensions. Shout out K-State trainers, always taking care of us. Best, best training staff in the country. All right. And just a little note, boys and girls, here at the health station, one of the activities I do with the students is using an ace bandage and practicing wrapping the wrist of an athlete that has been injured. So uh, it's a whole lot of fun to pretend to be an athletic trainer working with athletes. All right. So this brings us to our question now, uh, our first question. What sports or physical activities requires quick body movements? And with that, I'm going to bring in our friend, Mr. Bruder, to give us some of those responses that you may have put in the question and answer. So, Mr. Bruder, what kind of uh, physical activities or sports did they come up with? Hey, Coach, we had a lot of great responses that were shared, a lot of sports-related ones. We had uh, Ms. Ruiz's sixth-grade class in the Virtual Academy, Kaylee, Melina, I'll share about soccer and those yes. quick body movements that are required there. I'm thinking like change of direction, all those types of things. Absolutely. Uh, not only do you have to move quick on your feet in soccer, but you also have to control the ball. So it's kind of like a double uh, 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 work uh, workload right there on your feet and be trying to be quick. 
We also had a, a few people uh, mention, like Matthew mentioned baseball. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking uh, bat speed and your, your, your baseball swing. I know that's your favorite sport, Coach. Absolutely. Uh, moving those feet, getting them ready to uh, control that upper body to swing the bat is definitely a big part of it. Um, fielding the ball, moving, moving laterally, that first step, practicing that first step and being quick at it is going to get you to the ball a lot faster. Absolutely. This is Ryan's fifth grade class also mentioned tennis. So I'm thinking those lateral movements to, to hit the ball back to your opponent. Oh my gosh, yes. Lateral, forward, backwards, you angled. You really have to move in tennis. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. We also had a lot of people, including Esteban and Mrs. Rivera's uh, virtual academy combo class, all mentioned football, like we saw in the video, and all the different movements that happened there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so if those sports are of any interest, ladder movements, uh, uh, sprinting, exercises to move your feet in a certain way to be uh, to get to, to move them quicker, have them bounce off the ground a lot faster. I know the track athletes here at the field at the training center, I see them all the time warming up, doing all these little uh, uh, exercises to get their feet moving as quickly as possible uh, for their sprints and whatever events it is that they're doing on track and field. Yep. All right. So thank you, Mr. Bruder. At this point, I'm going to go to our next question, having to do more with the athletic trainer and maybe some of your personal experiences. So question two, what injuries have you experienced because of sports or physical activity? So what injuries have you experienced because of sports or physical activity? And so uh, a, a quick personal experience for me is throwing batting practice during uh practice, uh, obviously during practice or uh, uh, trying to train the kids on hitting, uh, my knee has really been bugging me. And so I've seen uh, uh, some athletic trainers to kind of tell me and show me some movement. So give us your experiences as to maybe, maybe, hopefully not, but maybe uh, a an injury that you have had during uh, sports. All right, boys and girls, this brings us to our build. So you see on the screen the materials that you will need, some cardboard, and I put down some specific sizes there for you guys to cut out with me. Um, again, those sizes, don't they don't have to be exact. Have them close and that will work. You will need your glue, your Elmer's, Elmer's glue, your large craft stick, mask and tape, ping pong ball, a rubber band, ruler, scissors, and a small little cup. All right, and remember, I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the glue gun just so that it kind of sticks a little faster, and you can see more of a finished product when I'm done. But Elmer's glue will work just fine. All right, so let me go ahead and switch cameras and go to my screen here. Give me a second. All right, there we go. Mr. Bruder, do you see my camera while I'll be working? Yep, we sure do. Excellent. All right, so let me go ahead and move over to that area where I will begin my work building that desktop mini basketball. All right, so I'm going to start with this box, which is kind of like a paper box. Again, whatever box you started with, just go ahead and follow along try to cut the pieces with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the box, make it kind of flat. Fortunately, this paper box works really, really well in doing that. Oops. Coach Ramirez, real quick, could we have you uh, move the camera slightly to the left? That way? Yeah, I think that's better. I'm just trying to help everybody see as much of the box as possible. Yeah, and so as I open up the box and make the cuts, you know, it's going to, uh, it will, once I cut the little pieces off that I'm going to be working with, it'll be a lot clearer. So as you can see, I've opened up my box and now I want that big piece right here for that 11 by 14, which is going to be my basketball hoop floor. 
So I'm going to cut out the, the, the sides. So that I can then get that floor going. Put that down here and I'm going to cut the other side. I think you can see the end of it. You'll see my scissors come up. Right there. I'll save that for later. Let me go ahead and cut these sides out. Well, I'm going to cut this side off. So let me go ahead and get this side. Now I'm going to use these flaps for the other pieces that I need. There we go. All right, I'll put this aside here. I'll come back and get that for the other pieces. Again, some measuring that's going to happen here with us, uh, with me and you. So let's be patient. Let's work work with me to try to get. So I need 11 by 14, which I thought was the best, you know, measurement for myself to use uh, for this activity. Again, it doesn't have to be that. It could be something different. So I'm going to mark there and add two more because my ruler only goes to 12, right? And I want it to be 14. So I mark there. I'm going to go two more. All right. Now, since I'm going to do one side, I need to do the other side because I want to be able to measure or make my line so that I can cut. Go two more. So now I'm going to make my line as to how far I'm going to be taking or making my cut. Now, so that's 14 from here to here. And now I need to do 11 from here. You can see there's 11. Make my line down here to 11. Make my cut line, follow it all the way down. There we go. Put this aside. All right, first I'm going to cut across. So this is the basketball floor. What do you call it? The, the wood floor, the court I'm going to have. Again, boys and girls, teachers, if you are getting backed up with this activity because of the cutting, don't worry about it, pause it, check it out later, finish it up. It, it is a really fun uh, little game that we're building today. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the other pieces. Okay, put this one aside. We're gonna take the other pieces to cut out uh, the, um, to cut out the rest that we need. So we need a six by five times uh, and, uh, by 10. All right, so let's go ahead and look to see how far this one is. So there's six. We're going to kind of do the same thing. Now I'm going to use the edge of this side in order to use the crease to help me with a cut. So six and a half by 10. Okay. I'm going to do 10 on this side as well so that I can make my line and know how far I'm going. Okay, and then my six and a half this way and this way. So what I'm built, what we're building right now and cutting out is going to be the backboard and the post. So let's go ahead and cut this bottom flap. Like I said, I wanted to use the crease here in order to help me with the cutting. Now be very careful with the scissors. Do not cut yourself as you are working here. Be very, very careful. All right. 
here's some extra pieces here. Now I'm going to go and make it my six and a half. Again, the six and a half worked for me. You can make your desktop basketball court size. So let's go ahead now. We have our post and our uh, backboard, but let's make the post look more like a post. So we're going to do a few measurements here. Now follow along with me. We're going to go four inches down from the top. Of course, do it on both sides, four inches. Okay, and then you're going to go two inches in on those same dots that you made. When you go these two inches here, you're going to be able to cut in to make that post. All right, so I've got to go two inches at the bottom as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect those dots to make our post. Again, if I'm going kind of quick, go ahead and pause. It's not very difficult, but it is kind of a physical thing to cut out the things and, and do this. So have fun working on this. Again, if you can think of a better way to do this as you're doing it, be my guest, be innovative, use some creative abilities. There we go. Ah, look at that. Starting to see the post and backboard. All right. Now look at this. What I've cut out here okay could possibly work for those six by twos or two by sixes that um we could possibly use so let's see how 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 these kind of pan out oh look at that two by six let's just go ahead and keep these and now, now we don't have to cut them out all right very good so here's our other two now all we need is So here's this one. So there's our bolt, our court, our two six by two pieces. Now all we need is a, a uh, we need two three by fives by three by fives. So I'm going to bring up some more board, cardboard, and measure those last two pieces. All right, I'm going to, whoops. I'm going to go ahead and cut the flaps off of this. All right, let's go ahead and measure those three by fives. All right, here we go. We're going to use the sides in order so we don't have to make too many cuts. So here's three and a half. Okay, and let's do another three and a half. Okay. Let's go three and a half again. As you can see, you got it. What you do to one side, you want to do to the other in order to make your lines to be able to cut. Okay. So there, my three and a half. And here's my three and a half. And then I'm going to just connect those two to make those two three and a half by three and a half squares. All right. Final cuts before we can start putting it together. Now, again, some of you maybe had these cut out um, uh, before. And so I appreciate your patience. Here we go. All right, there's our two squares. Very good. So time to put it together now. Let's go ahead and start with. Let's 
go ahead and start with putting our stand or our poles up so they stay up. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a line diagonally on one of the squares from corner to corner. That line then is going to be cut so you can get two triangles. These two triangles are going to work as stands for the post, just like that. Uh, what do we want, white or brown post? Let's do white post, white backboard, and then post. All right, so this is where you're going to use the tape. You're going to put two pieces like that. You're going to cut your tape and connect those together. Just like that. Take the other one. There you go. So now when you bend them, it becomes a stand, just like this. Okay? So let's go ahead and just fold these over. Very nice. Okay. So now that you have these there, go ahead and put one more piece. To kind of hold it together in front. Bend it and then put it down like this so that the tape moves with it. Make sure you bend it and it'll stay. All right, so now that the stand is up, you know it's going to stay up. So next thing we're gonna do is put it on the court. Okay. And so the way you're going to do that is by folding the triangles back. Okay, you're going to take the tape. Now tape's the only thing that's going to work here. The best thing that's going to work here in order to try to keep it as sturdy as possible. So put the corners of the triangles, the edge of the court, fold it down, and then tape it to the floor. Case. Make these kind of this, this. These are kind of like the longer ones because they are bending and trying to reach the floor. There go. Fold it down and then tape it down. So now you know that your board is going to stay up. Your backboard is going to stay up in post but I'm gonna add one more to each side just for stability and you're able to move it from place to place with no problem. There you go, just like that. Again, these you want them to be just a little bit longer. They can't be short pieces or they won't wrap around. There you go, two pieces definitely make it a lot more stable. All right, so as you can see, there's our backboard, there's our floor, it's sturdy. Let's go ahead and now and move on to the next piece. All right. The next piece, boys and girls, is going to be, let's go ahead and we're going to fold these. Into triangles, so you have to fold the middle in two piece in two parts, so like this. And like this, that's a little too much. About like that. Okay. And then you're going to fold this, these in, this, 
and have it, this is gonna be a part of the backboard. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have, you just have to have them folded and have them be a part, give them structure, give it stability when we put in the hoop, because this is going to be our hoop. So I'm going to grab some tape because you're only going to be able to use some tape here in order to try to keep it together. We're going to get to the glue here in a second. All right, so go ahead and just tape these things together like that. OK, and now you can see the flattest part you're going to use to put up here like this. So that's going to be part of the backboard right there. OK, so let's go ahead and put glue on the flat area. So, glue it on there. So I'll hold it up so you can see. Now, of course, you want to have it centered as best as possible. Hold it for a couple seconds. This is when your cup is going to come into play. Your cup is going to go right there. But before we put the cup in, we're going to cut the bottom off. So here's the tricky part. You're going to cut without cutting your fingers again, boys and girls. Cut a slit in the cup like this, the bottom, and then cut all the way around. And there you have your hoop, which is really cool because it's got these these uh, foldings, which make it look like the net. All right, you're going to add glue to the cup, and then simply glue it on to that piece that you put on the backboard. Hold it there for a couple seconds. All right, you're going to let it dry there. All right, so there's our backboard and there's our hoop. Moving on to the next part. The next piece, we are going to make the stand for our little shooter piece. So again, you're going to make fold this into a triangle by play, by making a by making two folds. Now you don't want it to be too big, okay? Two folds and then even on both sides. And again, you can play with this. You can make different angles to help you make better shots. Any way you do it. There's always improvement. So you're going to make a triangle like this and again use tape in order to hold it together. It'd be too tough with glue to try to hold that cardboard together. So I'm going to put it here and there. So that is going to hold the shape. So as you can see here, now I've got a little trampoline type thing in order for my shot to take place. The next thing we're going to do is glue the cup, the bottom part of the cup to the tongue depressor. Now give yourself some room up here for your finger to be able to flick it. All right, now, once that dries, take your rubber band, fold it, depending on how tight you want it or how tight it can be. It's got to go, you're going to put it underneath and around the little stand here because that's where the, st the stick's going to go, the tongue depressor is going to go. It's going to use the angles here to move. So we're going to glue this now to the floor. Make sure you center it 
and you're looking at it so it's like even with the basket. Okay, let that dry. And add a little bit more. Oops. A little bit more blue. There we go, right there. And then you take your stick here, slide it under. And until it dries, you can hold it with your with your fingers here and flick it, be able to flick it. So the rubber band is gonna, is gonna create that trampoline effect for the tongue depressor or the craft, large craft stick, all right? So, all right, at this point, we have our little basketball game going on. Flick here, goes in there. I'm gonna take a couple shots. Too low, so by watching how much force you're pushing down on it, maybe the angles, whatever it is that you feel you can adjust in your shot, like a regular basketball game, that's what you wanna do. A oh, little too low. See if I can get it up higher. Oh, off the backboard almost. So it went that way, I'm gonna move it a little bit this way to the side, the opposite side. Whoop, there we go, up. Oh. Looks like I let it lead a little bit more flight. I'm gonna maybe pull it this way, pull it out. <laughs> and so, let me go try one more time. I wanna try to make this in front of you guys. Let's see here. Oh, very close. I don't know if you could see it. Come on, come on. Oh, off the rim. Over the basket. So. Hopefully you guys could be a little more successful in shooting it and making those adjustments than me. Uh, have fun playing with this. Have some artistic, uh, uh, use some of your creativity and maybe do the, maybe do the, the court here, right? You can do all kinds of different things, decorate it, put the backboard square. Have fun with it, boys and girls, over vacation. All right, let's go back. It is time now to Go to our Kahoot game. So I'm going to stop presenting here and change my slide back. Let's go. All right, Mr. Bruder, I'm back. And it is time for our Kahoot game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Oh, while we get our Kahoot game uh, going, Let's let's get some answers to the questions. What injuries have you experienced because of sports or physical activities? Mr. Bruder, are you there? Yes, I, yes am. I am. All right. Before we get, Before we get started, started, you want to switch, switch, switch to your Kahoot screen, screen so people can see the code? code. Absolutely. The code is 160514. 160514. Go to Kahoot it and type in that code and let's answer some questions see what you've learned today all right so mr bruder did anybody share any of uh any injuries that they may have gotten yes but one more kahoot question for you can you switch us to your kahoot screen so we can see them logging in with us absolutely And while you do that, I can start sharing some of the responses as well. Awesome. I think I'm up. Yep. Good to go. We had Jaden share about uh, an injury getting hit in the eye with a, a baseball. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tyler shared about uh, breaking a wrist. Oof. Common. Mario shared about a injury to his finger playing basketball very very common <laughs> yeah Layla also shared about a, a fracture and a piece of her elbow playing uh, or doing gymnastics oh falls yes and gymnastics I didn't think about that yes 
I know you shared a, an example earlier. I, basketball being my favorite sport, I rolled my ankle many times. And if you're not familiar with the term rolling your ankle, it's usually a sprained ankle. So I've had many ankle sprains, but I did have one in particular where I tore some of the ligament inside my ankle and got to work with a sports medicine physician, kind of like the department that you showed there at the training center mm -hmm. and an athletic trainer to help get me back to, you know, dunking the ball on everybody. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, playing baseball myself, a lot of uh, knee injuries. Um, I've got a couple fingers that are kind of, you know, not straight because of catching and throwing and, and uh, slide, uh, uh, feet sliding in and bases. I played third base. And so, yeah, um, a lot of common injuries to the sport that you could have. And basketball, like I said, uh, you know, Kevin Durant can really probably relate to that now. Uh, common, common injuries in sports. Which is why it's so important to have those athletic trainers for anyone out there who's interested in that career. Every time, and on that note, every time I've seen the athletic trainers out here working with the track team, they're always so so jolly and happy because i mean they're outside they're working with athletes they're maybe in the sport that they love you know um uh, it's it, it seems like just such a fun job to go to every day and get to meet people talk to people help people so speaking, of, speaking right. of fun i think we're ready to play this kahoot game roll. all right here we go let's go ahead and start this kahoot on your marks Take your shot. All right. Here we go. All right, our first question for our Kahoot game. Where is basketball played? Where is basketball played? Is it played in the USA? Red triangle? Is it played in Australia only? Blue diamond. Is it played only in Russia? orange circle or is it played all over the world green square where is basketball played usa red triangle australia blue diamond orange circle russia green square all over the world one more time where's basketball played Red Triangle, USA, Blue Diamond, Australia, Orange Circle, Russia, Green Square, all over the world. All right, here we go. What answers did we get? Ah, 52, 52 of you all over the world. Great job. Moving on to the next one with Honest Line up at the lead. Here we go. Question two, what year did basketball start in the Olympics? So for those of you that were paying close attention, what year was basketball started in the Olympics? Red triangle, 1890. Blue diamond, 1936. Orange circle, 2010. Green square, 1920. What year did basketball start in the Olympics? Red Triangle 1890, Orange Circle 2010, Blue Diamond 1936, Green Square 1920. Yeah, this one, uh, if you were paying attention and you caught that bit of information, you may know what year it was. Let's see. Uh, hey, very nice. 41 of you. 1936, that is correct. All right, let's move on to the next question. Did on this line, nope, Daring Otter took the top spot. Let's go ahead and go to our third question here. Men's and women's USA basketball earned what medal in 2021? So in these last Olympics in 2021, Men's and women's USA basketball earned what medal 
in 2021? Was it silver? Red triangle? Was it gold? Blue diamond? Was it bronze? Orange circle? Or was it, or did they not win? Green square. Men's and Women's USA Basketball earned what medal in 2021? Was it, was it red triangle silver, blue diamond gold, orange circle bronze, green square, they did not win. One more time, red triangle silver, blue diamond gold, orange circle bronze, and or green square did not win. Let's check it out. That is correct. They earned the gold, 44 of you said. All right, moving on to our next question with our leader, Super Dolphin. All right, here we go. An athletic trainer works with, an athletic trainer works with, who does the athletic trainer work with? Does he work with bankers? red triangle does he work with athletes blue diamond does he work with biologists orange circle or does he work with electricians green square red triangle bankers blue diamond athletes orange circle biologists green square electric electricians what do you guys think? Hopefully this is a really, really simple question. Who do athletic trainers work with? Bankers, red triangle. Athletes, blue diamond. Biologists, orange circle. Electricians, green diamond or green square. Yes, 45 of you answered athletes. They work with athletes, boys and girls. That concludes, that was our last question for Take Your Shot. Third place, Genius Quail, all right. Second place, Witty Buffalo. And first place, drum roll please, Super Dolphin. All right, nice job. All right, boys and girls, let me go ahead and go back to my presentation. see here right, right there all right so that brings us boys and girls to the end of our day with you again let me remind you that if you go on cvesd youtube for to the innovation to the innovation channel you will see all of our innovation events all of our uh health station our our station events for you to review go over catch up on do it again you can also, as far as your health, go to the Physical Education Channel, CVESDPE, and learn about some of the physical activities you can do, exercises, in order to keep yourself healthy. Now, coming up next for our station events, live events, we have the Innovation Inspired by Nature Anthropod edition with our teacher, Ms. Kiros. Very good. This will be Friday, January 14th at 9 a.m. All right, well, that brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you for being here with me and see you next time.